The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Problem 11 states a simple pendulum consists of a mass hanging on a massless string of length 2 meters. You move the mass so that the string is at an angle of 37 degrees to the vertical and release. During the subsequent motion, what is the maximum speed of the mass in meters per second? We tell you to take cosine of 37 as 0.8, sine of 37 as 0.6, and g equal to 10. Just trying to make our lives a little bit easier with nice numbers. So, to our setup, we are given a simple pendulum, and there's our simple pendulum. It has a mass m, I believe. They, nope, they don't even tell us their mass. We're just going to assume mass m. But they do say we raise it to... 37 degrees. And they want to know what is the maximum speed. So, a couple things you need to know right off the bat is first off, where the maximum speed occurs, which hopefully you guys realize just logically it would be at the bottom. This is where the maximum speed occurs. This is where basically you have your maximum potential energy. Second, you need to know that. Pendulum problems like this, once again, we're moving from information about a height or at least an angle which we can use to solve for the height, and they're asking for maximum velocity, so that's going to lead us to use energy as our approach. And yeah, so let's get started. Trickiest, in my opinion, the trickiest thing in this problem is figuring out how high up it is just using your trig. So this is a nice little trick for you guys to remember. What you can do is, you, this is the arc of its motion, you do, you do is draw a horizontal line from where the pendulum starts to above where it finishes. And what you are get left with is a right angled triangle. Now, what we do know is we know that this length of the string is some length L, which they tell us actually. Let's write that down. L is equal to 2 meters. So. We know this is right here is 2 meters, and we know this entire length here is 2 meters because this is just the same string, and what we can do is figure out, we want to know its height, so this value right here is how far it moved from there to there because we're going to use that to figure out its potential energy and then convert to kinetic energy to figure out the velocity. So to solve for that height, what you do is you can say, well, we don't know what that is, but we can figure out what that is using some trig with the right triangle. So this is just going to be 2 meters times cosine of 37. Hopefully you guys can do that at this point in time with having your final. So we know 2 cosine of 37 is going to be that, which they told us specifically that we want to write 2 cosine of 37 as uh, 2 times 0 0.8, which should just be a 1.4, 1.6, excuse me. So we know this entire length right here, 1.6. So if this length is 1.6 and the entire length of the string is 2 meters, then this little bit right there has got to be 0 0.4. So that's going to be our height, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to set our datum right there. See, we have no potential energy when the pendulum's at its maximum velocity at the bottom. And we say our initial, we say our energy initial is going to be equal to our energy final. Okay, we have no external forces besides uh, force of gravity, we have no springs, we have no friction. So all we're dealing with is potential and kinetic energy at this point. So our initial potential is equal to our final kinetic. Therefore, m. G, H, is one half, M, B squared. So most of the time with energy problems, masses cancel out. That's why you don't get a lot of masses given to these problems. Now, with that in mind, what we can do is we can say one half of our V squared is going to be equal to our H, we said, was going to be 0 0.4. That's how high it starts out above where it ends. And G, they told us to use is 10. So we're going to say this is 10 times 0 0.4 is equal to 1 half of v squared. Okay? 
So with that in mind, we say 10 times 0 0.4 is just going to give us 4. We're going to multiply that by 2 to get rid of this. And we're going to be left with 8 is equal to b squared, or b is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times 2, or 2 root 2. Now, this is actually not an answer on this test. And every once in a while, they do give you tests that have no correct answer. And that's just how it is. People make mistakes. There, this is the correct way to do this problem. This is the answer to this problem. And the very fact that their answer is 2 root 4, no professor would actually write 2 root 4. They would just they would simplify the square root of 4 as 2 and just write it as 2 times 2, or 4. So this would be the right answer. This is the velocity at the bottom. This is how you do it, even though this isn't the number one choice on here. I just think that this test, they made a mistake, and they decided that there was enough good stuff on here to just keep it in the test bank. So, that's the end of the problem. Pendulum problems, oftentimes, uh, when they're just asking for heights and velocities, it's an energy problem, almost every time. Uh, they can throw some other stuff. They start talking about periods with your pendulum problems, or, you know, amplitudes or something. You might, you, you could probably use some other stuff, but just high, straight height to velocity questions are almost always energy. And don't forget this little trick trick. They like this. I've seen this many times on many different tests. What you can do is you can say that this height right here, they like to write it as L times 1 minus cosine of theta, which is just our, if you distribute it, L minus L cos theta, which is we took our 2 and subtracted 2 times cosine of our angle, and that's what we got our answer as. So this is a nice little trick to remember on your tests. And that's the end of the problem. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.